Hey everybody, how you doing? Last Outrider here. <clears throat> I'm going to be doing some of the formations from Data Slate. Wow, Glasgow. Um, I read over Data Slate. I even played a few test games with the formations, and I came to the conclusion that if I were to ever play Orcs again, it would consist of an army that is only two formations. Two formations is my orc army suggestion it can be expanded and decked out and customized to virtually any point size you can imagine but they're they're just fucking awesome the first one oh you know, by the way if you don't know formations are special rules in the data slates only quite honestly i think in the future every army is going to be formations because i can't see how a non-formation army can be competitive against the formation one but that's that's my prediction formations are if you buy certain units in a certain combination they will get other special abilities above and beyond what they get in the codex in this case here i'm going to be talking about my favorite formation the council of wag here's the fluff at the heart of Glasgow's Greenskins hordes. The Grand Warlord himself commands his armies, surrounded by an inner circle of big bosses and other minions that he deems useful to have around. This motley band of orcs is none other than Glasgow's infamous Council of Wag. Together, they form one of the greatest threats in the galaxy. For not even mighty Glasgow could command such vast numbers of greenskins on his own. The pair of powerful orc warlords in council, Glasgow's lieutenants, are tasked with bossing about the six great clans on behalf of the prophet of Gork and Mork, and my personal favorite, Bork, and their individual skills and knowledge led Glasgow's already prodigious tactical mind to even greater capacity. Thus far, their physical and psychological impact on the fighting has been unstoppable. So what is the Council of Wag, you ask? Uh, it consists of Grasgol Faka, Matag Gratznik, two war bosses, which you are free to customize and deck out any way you want. One big mech, same thing. One unit of knobs, also same thing in terms of number and everything. That's the customization part. Go crazy on that. Restrictions, if you want to call it a restriction. The knobs unit must be equipped with a WOG banner. What do you get in return for buying all of these units? You get, first of all, two special rules, biggest and the best. And the boss is watching. I will get to those in a second. <clears throat> because I like these other ones first. Called Boss Mob. All models in this formation must be deployed as a single unit. Models with the independent character special rule cannot choose to leave or join the unit. This is very important. <clears throat> that means all of those units that I lifted me of are now one unit with no independent characters in the unit. This is important with things like snipers and targeting and everything like that. This is one boss mob unit. There are no independent characters, no sergeants, no leaders, no anything like that. It is a generic holistic unit. So as far as I understand, the point of this special rule is nobody is sniping at Glasgow Thraka uh in a boss mob <clears throat> or targeting over it next banner of the great wag as long as the bearer of the wag banner is still alive all models in the same unit which would be everything that was listed up there have the fearless special rule and for gravy add plus one to their weapon skill characteristic on their profile in addition all friendly units with the orc fraction within 12 inches 
may re-roll failed morale and pinning checks. This is also where the uh, boss mob is very important. Because with all of those figures, that 12 inches isn't from one figure. That 12 inches is from any figure in the formation. <laughs> Which is a lot of figures. You can have it trailing all across the back of the board. Every other orc unit within 12 inches of that re-rolls morale checks. And the entire unit gets plus one to weapon skill from the banner. And fearless. Yes, that means Grasgol is getting plus one. It's insane. And we're not done. Grasgol's lieutenants. Both of the orc war bosses in the formation have plus one weapon skill on their profile. And you say, oh, that's nice. Did you just not hear what I said before? Banner of the Great Wag just gave them plus one weapon skill. Grasgol's lieutenants, they just got another plus one weapon skill. That's two. The two war bosses in this formation have plus two weapon skill plus whatever you want to add to them from the codex <laughs> and we're not done furthermore at the start of each battle before deployment make two rolls on the wag glasgow warlord trait table re-roll duplicates and apply both of the results to Grasgol Thraka. And you say, ooh, that sounds good. Now, here's the last five words. In addition to his standard warlord trait. Yes, boys and girls, three warlord traits for Glasgow Thraka if you take this formation. Ow! <clears throat> now... Let me get on to the other ones. Um, the, the, the biggest and the best. This special rule only applies to a warlord chosen to be as a part of a detachment or formation presented in this book. Not the codex. Not the main book. If your warlord has this special rule, he must always issue and accept a challenge whenever possible. If you have more than one model with uh, in combat with the special rule in effect, you can choose which model issues or accepts the challenge. If a warlord with this special rule kills an enemy character in a challenge, he can re-roll all failed to wound rolls in close combat for the rest of the game. Yes, biznatches. If you challenge somebody in this mob and you lose, they get plus one. I mean, they get to reroll wounds for the rest of the game. So that's if they use Glasgow. But you don't apparently have to use Glasgow. Because if you have more than one model in combat with a special rule in effect, which would mean that this applies to the entire mob, if you want to challenge the mob... The player gets to choose any model in that mob. Doesn't have to be Glasgow, who will answer to challenge. And that character, that model, whatever it is, will get plus one. Will get to re-roll its wounds for the rest of the game. Nice. And we're not done. We still got a bag of chips. The boss is watching. Units with the mob rule special rule that include at least one model from this detachment or formation. Or formation. This is what I'm saying. Or formation. So it's not just, the, when you go back there, it's not just the knob unit or everything. It's the entire, everything in it. The entire formation has the special rule. <coughs> and this one. Basically it says, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, detachment or formation game plus two modifier on any rolls on the mob rule table. Plus two. However, should any of these units suffer hits from a break in heads or squabble result on the mob rule, they saw, they roll uh, a D3 plus three instead of a D6. But they get plus two. Boom. Also, 
if every model in a unit has this special rule and the unit fails a morale check or pinning test after any re-rolls not before so it doesn't happen if they just fail it happens if they fail plus any re-rolls that they might or might not get roll immediately on the following table one born to fight orcs love fighting and the prospect of a good punch up will sometimes stop them from running off if the unit is locked in combat it is treated as if it has passed the morale check or pinning test. If the unit is not locked in combat, it fails the morale check or pinning test. So if you, <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so if you roll a one and you're in combat, uh, you pass. Next, breaking heads. The mob's leader knocks a few heads together until the lads settle down and get back in the fight. If the unit includes one or more or characters, including independent characters it suffers d6 strength four negative squat hits and it is treated as if it has passed the morale check and pinning test these hits are randomly allocated but cannot be allocated to orc characters any excess hits are lost if the unit does not include any orc characters it fails the morale check or pinning test. So it doesn't affect, none of the hits will ever, you, basically only your knobs unit. Only your knobs unit is going to get hit. Everybody else will be fine. So one, if you're in hand-to-hand, -hand, you're back in the fight. Two to three, you're breaking heads. It's a, it's a D6 strength four AP squat hit. And three to four <clears throat> squabble, I think we know it. A brawl breaks out. And the orcs decide what to do. As the orcs, with the dust settles, nobody can remember what the trouble was about in the first place. If the unit has 10 or more models, it suffers D6, strength 4 hits, no AP. <clears throat> and it is treated as if it has passed a morale check or a pinning test. The hits are randomly allocated. If the unit has fewer than 10 models, it fails the morale check and pinning test. And this is why I said I take the full unit of knobs. To make sure that that doesn't happen so basically you're never going to run away almost unless you roll a one and are outside of hand-to-hand -hand combat <clears throat> it's possible but that that would be it everything else is you're going to pass so that is my favorite unit this is going to be uh next on my next video is going to be called uh glasgow's bully boys which is the sister unit that goes with this like I said, it's it's just amazing. Um, I have a lot of fun with it. I hope you like this video. Keep watching. Bye.